Uh, today will be instructive chess. So hourly rapid arena. Maybe I'll play the whole tournament. Rapid rating is palindromic, 2662. I don't think I'm too far away from my peak. Let's see. 2689 is my peak. So 27 points away. Heart monitor tonight. No. <laughs> my watch is... I think my watch is turned off and in my bag. I actually played an over-the-board chess tournament today. It was a local rapid tournament. It was hosted by the, the St. Louis Chess Club. And I took off my watch and turned it off so it wouldn't interfere, so people wouldn't be too suspicious of me. And uh, yeah, I forgot to take it out and charge it. I did pretty well. I took, I think, second. It was a four-round tournament. I scored three out of four. I lost to Grandmaster Benjamin Bach. And we actually filmed the game. Might end up putting it on YouTube at some point. Um, but it was a it was a really sad game because I was I was better the whole game and then I at some point I think I was completely winning, and in the final position I was still pushing for a win, but I flagged. So time control is ten plus two, and two second increment over the board is a bit different than two second increment online. So it takes longer to physically move the pieces. And I was not adjusted, but I still won a nice prize. Had some other nice games. Yeah, it's a bit harder to pre-move over the board. And it's much easier to knock over pieces over the board. So less than a minute, we do have a another title player who's playing a game. Who's playing a game from the country of Macau. And has not the best internet connection. Nine, eight, seven, six, All right, here we go. Five, four, Will I play this three, person if they're playing two, a game, though? One, Probably, zero. right? Are they about to simul? Let's see. Nothing's happening. So much suspense. Uh-oh. Is it broken? Oh, that's the sound. Okay. Make this board bigger. Okay, so I know my opponent is, is playing two games at once. Um, I'll focus on this game. I'll play my, my usual stuff. Probably going for a Taimanov. So actually, I learned a new move here. I actually learned a new move this morning. I almost always play Queen C7 in this position, but here I'm going to play A6. It's a slightly different move order. And the over the board tournament I played earlier, I actually had this exact position. We're still following the game. It was the last round. I played Tatev Abrahamian, and it was a money game. Tatev played Queen E2. Rook one is also playable. The general plan is just to play Bishop E7 and Castle. Bishop D6 would get forked, so a bit more solid here. Yeah, I have simuled two different tournaments in the past, but not happening tonight. Okay, opponent being super aggressive, offering a draw. Interesting. If I castle, there's bishop h6, and then I probably lose material. So I think I have to play g6 here. This might still be some theory. Like bishop h6 coming. He's bluffing hmm. with the draw. It's funny, like I I was preparing for Tatev, and I I was preparing the position with the queen on g3. So there's another line where the queen goes to f3 and g3. And in that line, there's something like this, and then this, and then this. But that's not possible with the queen on g4. I mean we going into like some theoretical draw line? Opponent might be prepared here. I think I'll start with bishop f8. It's not a move I'm really fond of playing. Though I guess there is a benefit to bishop f8. So if takes, I take with king and then put the king on g7. I think it should be okay.
it is a little bit awkward. I was thinking if bishop g5, I would have played h5. Might be worth analyzing after the game. So it's not the prettiest of positions. Like I have a lot of darks for holes. I have a, a keyboard that's low on battery. I'll just turn off the keyboard for now. I have a wireless keyboard that some sometimes needs to be plugged in. I also have a light sword bishop that for the time being it's feeling blue. How do I make blue? Why can't I make blue? Oh, my keyboard's not working. That's why. Now I have to turn back on the keyboard. <laughs> How do I make blue? There we go. This is feeling blue. I mean, ideally in the middle game, I'd like to play bishop b7, c5, d4. White's going for a very typical positional idea, usually involving c4 and b3. So do I want to start with c5? c5, c4, d4. And there's other options too. There's a5. I could start with king g7, maybe king g7. Just a more flexible move. Because I'm not sure how I want to approach the queenside development. Like c4 happens. Now c5 is less attractive because takes takes and then there's concerns about e6. If I play rook b8, then b3. Queen a5 comes to mind. The queen a5 is kind of interesting. I think I'll just play it. I am kind of abandoning the king side, but it's hard for white to actually crack the setup. And there's an idea now to take and then take. Not sure how good that would be. If I start with taking, I mean, let's assume bishop takes. Bishop takes, takes, queen here, f6. And then knight f7, e5 would be some plan. And there's some issue with e6 hanging. But even then, maybe it's okay. I might really regret going into this. But this is one of White's biggest assets, so if I can win it and get away with it, maybe it'll be okay. So let's calculate one more time. Here, here, f6, f4. I could throw in rook d8 there. No queen a7. Is b4 a concern? b4 hangs a knight, though. Let's go for it. I have kind of a bad feeling about this. But I'm not seeing like concretely how white punishes me. So if anything, I'll I'll learn a lesson if I'm overlooking something. Bishop F1 is a good sign though. I have rook D8 with tempo. On the board for the first time, time yesterday. Oh no, my queen. Oh yes, your smother mate. Good job, the Earl of Sandwich. That's uh, it's always a nice item to add to the bucket list. Or cross off the bucket list, I should say. Wow, so white's trading. And I just want a pawn. I mean, there is a line, takes, takes, rook b8, takes, and I lose a6. There's also taking the bishop f4 and I lose e6. I mean, okay, there's no reason to think. I have to take here. I'm probably rook a7. 
Rook a7, f4, knight d3. We might be trading off a lot. So rook b8, trade. I think I'd rather hold on to a pawn. Because I don't want to give white the outside passer. Okay, so I do have knight d3 here. Oh, but knight d3, rook d1. So I probably have to play knight f7. Uh, this is slightly worse for black. I think white played this well. Knight, knight d7 is no good. Knight g4, I think knight f7 is the only move. Not the happiest move to play. Got to move faster too. Opponent's still offering a draw, which sometimes indicates fear. And White's played like a pretty good game so far. So taking the draws. It's probably what I should do. The question is, do I want to try and push for a win, though? Like, c5. c5 first. a4 ideas. At least with the pawns on dark squares, they can't be attacked by the bishop. The drawback is white now has full access to light squares, so not restricting the bishop. My knight's kind of just sitting, doing nothing. Okay. I think I have to take. I think that trade is actually like a bit more favorable for, for black, because my rooks were way more passive. White did have an active rook he could have uh, probably kept on the board. And now there's an idea to get the knight to d4, which would be a very nice outpost square. I mean, generally, these types of positions, the bishop is a bit better than the knight. I have this move. Almost works. There, there. 97. And I check and win a2, but rook c7 end. I think I'd rather go for this. Maybe some rook e2 idea. White can be solid with this move. Okay, so now the plan is to probably build up on the king side. Probably the king wants to come to d6, like over defend the pawn, so then the rook can mobilize. Like maybe the plan is king e7 to d6, rook a7, and a4. Am I concerned about the rook infiltrating? Might be a little bit concerned, but it's interesting. I mean, rook here, I could play king d7 and ensure the rook can't come to the back rank. I'm calculating this, 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 and then c4. It's also this move. Yeah.
not really achieving much here. C4 takes, takes, check, G5 first. I'm taking some risk. So it does weaken F5, but pawn can't take. Taking a lot of risk here. So I defend and now I'm attacking B3. End games can be very, very tricky. Objectively, it's probably equal, but I think it's a three result game. If I take. Taking looks right. Ninety two. A nice thing about this move, it prevents King G one to attack the rook and it hits a pawn, which can't be defended. And this pawn, of course, can be a concern. But hopefully I'll have rook B two. And there's no rook A two because I take with check. Rook a2 would lose a rook. Thank you, CR Park. Tuning in from Honduras. Hope you're well. Uh oh. Did not see that move. I think it's okay though. It's still objectively a draw if bishop takes. Oh, did I repeat? No, okay. Um, that's going to be hard to win. Okay, now I have some hope.
Yeah, this is just a draw now. Thank you for the raid. W. Grafe, how's it going? Wait, did... Okay. Uh, I flagged, but it's insufficient mating material, so... <laughs> there is a point, though. I guess when I played this... Well, I played King F1, which, um, I guess if King G1, it's, uh, then it's winning. Of course, White could take the pawn too. <laughs> okay. So it's a draw. Um, I wonder, I wonder if I had chances to, like, I really need to charge my keyboard. Check this out. Yeah, I might take a break to get a charger. I don't think I have one here. Is it never winning? If it was never winning, then I guess I don't feel so bad. I was never winning. I mean, black was slightly for choice. Engine prefers knight h5. Maybe this was my best chance. Thank you, D. Sarah. At some point, I was worse, too. Yeah, when I was taking these risks. Okay, I'm going to be right back, and um, hopefully I can find the right cable. BRB. Yeah, I see the question about insufficient mating material. But I think it was answered. Because I, I was the one who flagged. It doesn't matter if I have a pawn. It just matters what my opponent has or, or doesn't have. So this was actually a very clean game. I was worse. Yeah, I was worse in these lines. Or like going into the end game. But so much like so much better to actually play it out rather than agree to a draw. I think the first draw offer. Oh, Lee Chess says the first draw offer was move eleven. So if the game ended here, it would not have been as interesting or exciting. Okay, moving on. And that first game took, what, about 25 minutes? Might be hard to win this tournament. I don't think I'll be berserking. Maybe I'll mix up the openings a little bit, though. Yeah, if you're just joining, uh, playing the hourly rapid arena. And this is my second game playing Sapanta. I'm playing E4. Ooh, we have a Latvian. So against the Latvian, I have to remember. Pretty sure it's takes. Is it like knight of six? Is it d six or yeah, it's knight of six first? There's a nice idea in this line. Wait, no. Pretty sure the main move is queen f six. With knight f six, should be a bit different.
I mean, Bishop C4 comes to mind. I'll admit that I'm kind of on my own here. But Bishop C4 might just try and punish this to the maximum. Queen E7, D4. Let's, uh, let's play Bishop C4. I mean, the nice thing is that I'm very close to castling. And it, it's probably going to be hard for Black to castle. Black. Allowing Knight F7 or even Bishop F7. I think in this case, I want to play Knight F7. I am realizing there's an idea like queen e7, knight takes, and then d5. You streaming tonight is the first good Welcome back to, to Shwarma. Today. My flight was delayed five hours and I missed oh, no, your connection. I to be at a wedding tomorrow. Oh no, my flights. I hope, I hope things go more smoothly. Yeah, I have to focus here a little bit because it's not that obvious. Like knight f7, take d5, and then bishop g4 is a threat. I do have bishop e2, though. It should be okay. I can't really tell if my opponent is prepared or... Like, they're taking time here, so they're probably not super well prepared. But also, queen e7 is like the only logical move, so... Like, sometimes you don't realize that you only have one option and you should just play it quickly. I'm going to have to analyze this after the game. Uh, let's take d5. Yeah, a move like d5, bishop b3 would then run into a ton of trouble. Like bishop g4, f3, take with check. But bishop e2... Black still has compensation. As a center, my knight's probably getting trapped. Yeah, there's really no saving the knight. Play d3. The strategy here is to develop the queen side, probably castle soon. Opponent just played Lafian because they like potato jokes. Is Lafian known for their potatoes? Is Lafia the Idaho of Europe? Or the Jonathan Schrantz of Europe? Okay, I think I take... Because if knight takes, maybe I, I start consuming things. If pawn takes, then I keep developing. I guess I'll share a confession, is that I didn't seriously study the Lafayette Gambit, or study what to do against the Lafayette Gambit, until about a year ago. It was always an opening that I just assumed you can do anything against and, and be all right. Um, now, my opponent managed to surprise me this game because I would have been more prepared for queen f6, which maybe I can show after the game. Okay, we see queen takes e4, so let's castle. But about a year ago, I finally learned what to do against the Lafayette. Um, I do want to give a, a nice shout out to Chess Mood, who's uh, actually they have a promotion going going on. We do have the Chess Mood command, but they have like a whole opening repertoire course for White, starting with e4, and there's a whole section dedicated to how to refute the Lafian. There's also a section how to refute the Stafford, which 
unfortunately is is very well done. <laughs> they offer a good line. So I want to play rookie one. Or do I? I mean, there's also bishop b5. So a lot of moves to consider here. Rookie one looks nice, though. Preparing to discover pin. Why not knight takes g6? Honestly, I should have considered it. I was just a little bit antsy to castle. If I took black would take and then castle, then black would have a, a move. And maybe there's some argument that this extra tempo is more valuable than the pawn. Because I'm up material here, I'd rather activate the pieces. But I don't know, if I if I saw knight g6, I maybe would have played it. Will you be doing blindfold tonight? Not in this tournament. I mean, I do have the blindfold still sitting here. Probably need to wash it. It's like hand wash only, so I have to find some some water and sink. Okay, so king f7. Yeah, let's play knight c3. There was a question, can't you play bishop b5 and then, oh, then rook e1. Um, yeah, I consider that. Bishop b5 can be met with king here, probably king d8. Tournament, Eric. And then this holiday season it's is still playable. With love and good spirits. Smile. Thank you, Hijinx. Appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't really want to commit the bishop to b5, and then like even if the king would be provoked to d8, then c6 would come. But again, there's a lot of different ways to play this position. Are you trying to win the tournament? I would like to. I got off to a slow start. Like my first game was 25 minutes long. It was like a very hard fought draw. It could have been just a, a nine move draw, but uh, if I had accepted the, the opening draw offer. I mean, the leader has nine points, so maybe it's possible to try and win. I do have two of these, so maybe I could just put this in the washing machine and hopefully it doesn't like get destroyed. Do a delicate mode. Thank you, TDP903, the first time prime. Oh, Shorma says, Shorma's tagging the wrong username. <laughs> I guess my, my Lee Chess username is Eric Rosen, but my Twitch name is Ian Rosen. So offering some reward to win the tournament. 2k bits if I win it, okay. If I want to win the tournament, then I definitely should be playing a lot quicker. It's easy to play quick moves in this position. Queen e2 looks nice, threatening queen e7. Bishop h6 probably coming soon. Thank you, Magdaragdag. Prime for 10 months. Yeah, maybe I'll try and win without berserking. Could be an interesting challenge. Okay, so the pieces have found like, pretty good squares. With this sort of setup on the queen side, it's very hard to develop the knight and bishop and rook. So it's kind of a question, like what my next moves are. Like any way to generate a threat? Probably just rook d1. Maybe there's some idea of sacking. Not the craziest idea. I kind of like the idea of b4 first. Ninety-six. 
Hey Eric, how many Elite Chess tournaments have you won? Yeah, this smooth. Let's play this smooth. I don't know. There's probably a way to check. The other day I was checking some of my Elite Chess stats. There are some cool stats of like how how many hours of my life I've spent playing on Lee Chess. And I think it added up to what, something like over a hundred days. Maybe a couple of thousand hours. B4. Yeah, let's play B4. I'm envisioning some line like 96 and then take and then take and then take and then take and then take. And then take. But even that, there's also an idea to take in the 94. Hmm. Like too many nice looking options. I'm making use of the pin. Thank you, Audacious Andy. Gifting to Al Benaziri. Yeah, opponent's getting a little bit low on time here. The plan might be to play h4 and knight g5. I'm going to assume the bishop will move. If bishop moves back, I can play knight g5 right away. Why don't you use a prettier Lee Chess extension? Um, I've just gotten used to classic Lee Chess. It kind of fits with this layout. It's also maybe a bit more recognizable. I have seen other streamers use that extension, though. It does look nice. Okay, let's let's take a bishop. I have a feeling I'm gonna win this game on time. Especially if we trade queens, but I'll try to at least create some mating net. The final moves of this game, even without a queen. I d6, rook d8. Maybe rook h8. Okay. Oh, back to tournament. So my first win of the tournament. Will it be the start of a streak? 52nd place. Three tournament points. Yeah, usually to win these tournaments, you do need to berserk. So let's do it. I learned my lesson yesterday, kind of. But I forgot my lesson just now. I'll still try and keep this instructive. Playing the Grand Prix attack. I played this opening over the board today against Benjamin Bach at the Rapid Tournament. I actually got some nice opening prep. Yeah, Benjamin played e6. And then I play d4. Oh, Brad said about the previous game, not used to seeing Eric have a four minute time advantage. Yeah, maybe you're more used to seeing this.
h6. I think with h6, I just will play a classic setup. With e6, there's a very specific line with d4 take and knight b5. The goal here is to go for the more typical Grand Prix ideas. Like usually the king goes to h1, queen goes to e1. We see f5, wow. Yeah, combining this and this is very weakening to g6. So the idea here is very simply to play queen g3 and go after g6. It's not plugged in. What's happening? It wasn't fully plugged into the wall. That's uh, the low battery warning for the keyboard. I thought it was charging, but it wasn't. But now it is. Okay. Yeah, usually in these sort of openings, Black Castle's kingside. With f5, the king is probably not going there anytime soon. Somebody call a wall charger, but not for me, yeah. At least my power is working. There have been instances in the past with power outages. So I'll take king h1. Yeah, I still want to play queen g3. Like if I get this move in, currently there's no way for black to defend the pawn. Like g5, I take it. King f7 is off limits. That's kind of a difficult spot for black. Oh, Cubes was asking, when do you usually stream? I don't keep the same schedule. Schedule can vary from week to week. I usually stream when... I have energy and free time. Okay, those are usually the two requirements. So it's, uh, I would say, maybe about five times a week on a regular basis when I'm not traveling. Andrew's asking, are you concerned about the king being tucked in the corner? Yeah, kings in the corner can sometimes be exploitable, but sometimes they're just very safe, too. Okay, what to do here? Probably queen g3 still. Like, of course, the king has no legal moves currently. But generally, when you're trying to evaluate if the king is safe or unsafe, you have to ask yourself, can the opponent actually exploit it? And in this case, it's so hard for black to get to the king. So here I'm very fine. This is probably the, the best score on the board for the king. If it was on b1, then black would have more attacking ideas. And black trying to have attacking ideas. We might see h5 coming. And uh, I can't take the knight because pawn takes and then I'd be in trouble. So it's kind of creative. I don't know if it actually works for black. Knight e2. Yeah, I have to be careful as well. But for now, knight f2 is off limits. So is anything to e3. So as long as I'm controlling the key squares, move like h4 is almost like really good for black, but I have queen f3. And what I want to do is very simply take the bishop and then take the knight. But just as I was saying my king is so safe on h1, like I'm potentially close to getting mated if the h file opens. I can't recall, at least recently, if there's been a time I streamed seven days in a row. Maybe I did. But usually I like to take at least one day off per week, if not more. It's important to have some balance. If she's asking, will you be photographer at World Rapid and Blitz? Uh, no. 
If anything, I'd prefer to be a player. But yeah, that event is um first of all, I think they're they're still figuring out like details last minute. It was only announced what a couple weeks ago. And this time of year with with flights and also weather, it's uh it's not worth it. So I guess Bach did succeed in saving the G-Pong. Like now the knight could move back and although it moves back this way, now I can trap the bishop. Maybe it had to move back that way. But this is a nice kind of bishop trap. This is sometimes why bishops should not be plopped in the center too early. Man, this is a common theme in duck chess where I play this and then duck on e5 or f6, but the knight is basically acting as a duck. And black cannot use a jump spell. I'm trying to understand this analogy. At a hotel, the housekeepers usually over tuck the sheets too tightly. You need a balance between the king being too cozy and being too open. Yeah, you definitely don't want to just like throw your king in the middle of the jungle. But king is nice and cozy here. Safe from all the predators. Like the king is kind of comparable to a baby. Like in the early stages of life, or in the early stages of chess, you should protect your baby. But as life goes on, then the baby sometimes can become stronger. Especially when queens are traded, then it grows up and can help in the end game. Okay, e5. So, opponent's getting low on time. I'm just trying to open up the position. Pawn takes probably this move. And there's an idea of f4. I'll be happy to take, take, take. And knight will be attacked three times. And it's pinned. It's a decent move. Play rook c1. It's like the one piece not doing anything. Maybe I could have played bishop e5. The queen's tied down. Your speed run videos. Oh, good to hear. Uh, Rukskola. Yeah, another one is coming soon. Just have to finish the, the editing. Be episode 11. Okay, so if I take... I might throw in the check. Both bishops are hanging. This bishop can't be taken. If this bishop's taken, I win the knight. Now I'll take the knight. There might be a line like takes, 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 and then takes. With eventual takes. But yeah, opponents running very low on time. Okay, got in most of the takes. Back to tournament. Where am I? Top 30. One, two, three. Okay. Berserk. We have a King's Gambit. So even though I'm berserking and I'm maybe playing slightly more dubious openings, I'll still try and keep it instructive. 
but I am trying to win the tournament for this uh, this, this bits reward. So I think it's it is within reach, hopefully. So this is a Falkbeer counter gambit against the King's Gambit. And one of the main points is black gets the pawn to e4 early, restricting white's development. Bishop e4 is nice, pinning the knight, fighting for the e4 square, preparing to castle. There's a line here. Yeah, I was going to say bishop d2, e3. I give away the e-pawn to then take the d-pawn. I'm still getting some initiative. And yeah, white's going to have to spend time moving the bishop. Can we trade? So trying to double the pawns. There's a funny move here, queen e2 check. If not queen e2, I'm probably happy to castle. Um, here, I think I'd rather play this first. Keeping the knight here, because I'm attacking this. There's a lot of options for the knight. With casting, I defend g7 and prepare rook e1. Also, um, I've shown this before in, in some videos, but if queen e2, there is a really funny tactic. Uh, which we're not getting. So let's play rook e8. Okay, bishop e2. e knight e3. I'm down a pawn still. But with knight e3, I'm preventing the king from casting either way. I'm hitting g2. I'll quickly note, if queen e2, then king d7 is the best move, threatening rook e8. And black is winning there. Just a funny idea. So this knight is enjoying life. We might see g3. I'm trying to calculate, like, after g3, there's queen d5. Queen d5 looks nice, actually. Because if knight f3, I can take, take, and then take. Winning back the pawn. Rook f1. Maybe it's nothing super special. White's under pressure. I guess there's also, like, g3... Queen d5, knight f3, and then something like uh, bishop g4, h3. But between the queen, knight, and rook, I mean, the pieces are nicely placed. I don't think I want to take, is that just trades? I do have to watch out, although knight e5 is not a threat, because knight's pinned. Maybe I do just play bishop g4. What does white do? Very simply attacking a pin to piece. Yeah, it's nice to calculate those other like forcing lines on the opponent's time. Oh, king f2, though, I missed. Uh, it's not simple. I probably should have played bishop h3. Yeah, king f2 is kind of neutralizing. And let's develop the knight. In some sense, knight is still pinned to the g2 square. Like knight e5. Oh, this could get really messy. h3 is probably a good move. If I take and then queen c5, there's d4. And there's not too many options here. And they're immediately. The 
Let's start with this. Yeah, this I feel like I'm I'm losing the thread a little bit. It's still very interesting though. It's just White probably has enough defensive resources now. And D4, there's Queen B6. Queen D6 is probably a bit better though. Just centralize. Opponent's playing well though, neutralizing. Probably should have taken more time before playing bishop g4. So two bishops versus two knights. I am attacking the pawn. Um, I can't take the pawn right away. I can add another attacker. And this setup is a bit awkward for white because the bishop's blocking the c pawn. Like white would love to somehow play c3. We might see bishop takes. It's maybe the only way to save the pawn. That's still not simple. Like, I want to take the pawn, but I should probably do it. But with which knight? Might be losing b7 in the end. Imagine takes, take with knight. Take b7. I do have the move c6 there to try and trap the bishop. And then have queen d5 and knight f3. Down about two and a half minutes. Not bad for having berserked. I'm also realizing like if takes takes c3 in an attempt to simplify, I do have takes and then takes, and then the intermediate move, knight takes e1 with check. So white has to be careful. Yeah, this kind of forces trades. Although with this line, I'm going to have a different intermediate move. I think I do want to take with Rook. Yeah, there's a funny line. I mean, a lot of people would just like immediately pre-move takes or just, yeah, take back. But I have this move Knight H4. And what this does is runes white structure. And then I'll take back. Okay, I will have the isolated D pawn, but these pawns, especially against a Knight, it's probably a significant advantage for black. I mean, white does have a more active king. And the goal is to play f6 and then walk the king in. Actually trying to determine, like, if king here, I could play f5. I could also play d5, which maybe is better to complement the knight. Because now I'm creating this wall. The knight and pawn control some nice squares. So the king can't really get in. And then the plan is to play f6 and get my king to f5. Yeah, this is a stage of the game where you want to untuck your king. It's time to explore the world. Try and claim some, some land, some territory. Opponent wants to play this move, which I don't mind allowing. 
I don't mind taking and having double H pawns myself. We might see f5, which then could be interesting, because then I'm a little bit boxed out. But then the pawn could be weak for a while, and the bishop could never defend f5. Now I don't have to worry about f5. I do have to worry about b5, so let's shut it down. If a4, I'll play b5 myself. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, a very, very positional endgame. We see the imbalance of bishop versus knight, but also like some strategy with the pawn structure and pawn breaks, trying to maximize square control. And with this structure, there's really no entry point for the king. Like, There's no way the king or bishop can attack anything on the queen side. And then I can just focus on the king side. And it's still a question how to win, because if I want to win this pawn, I might need to move my knight, which would allow king d4. But maybe white's like in some zugzwang at some point. Like if here I play this, bishop moves back, I win this. It's actually very close to zugzwang. King's tied down to the pawn. Yeah, so now I can take King D4. I can either take or win the, the A pawn. Probably want to win the A pawn. Um, what's the best way to do this? Okay, that's a fork. I was trying to win this game out of the opening, but it took some uh, later stage endgame strategy. But hopefully instructive, hopefully some lessons to take away. Yeah, the last try is to play h6, hoping I pre-move something. can pre-move this. Okay. All right, back to tournament. That was a long game, but decent fight. It's going to be really hard to win this tournament. <laughs> Leader has 31 tournament points. Like, not only do you have to berserk, but you have to win games, like, pretty quickly. Did the opponent want pawns on dark or light squares? Um, in that position, I don't think it really would affect anything because there's just no way to break through on the queen side. Generally, you want your pawns on different color squares than your bishop to complement the bishop. Oh, I'm playing the person. No, I'm not playing the person in first. I'll still berserk though. Playing the person in fourth. Have a Nimzovich. Holding off, I'm playing d4. I have some b4 move. I don't think I can resist. I don't know, b4 doesn't work because queen defends the bishop. b h3 first. I might go for some quick g4. Ooh, fancy. I do have bishop e2. Is 
bestimmt die Five. Be two, though. I'm not sure if we're following any like theory. I feel like I'm playing natural moves though. So D4. I have a question between D4 or D3. I think I prefer D3. Sometimes on d4, the pawn's a target for rook d8. And the plan might be to play bishop e3, queen d2, and queenside castle. I'll come back to Pablo. Yeah, this is a risky, uh, risky berserk. I'm down about five minutes on the clock. Felt like I got caught in a little bit of opening prep, but I think the position is like decently solid. Might be worth casting at some point. I would have to calculate takes, takes, takes. That's probably too risky. But I'm keeping my options open. At some point, like, especially when my rooks get connected, then I will be threatening to take the bishop. And if that has to take here, that would be a very nice change. And there's so many cases when the bishop moves back, then the queen's exploitable, there might be g4 ideas. So the question, is cheating worse in Rapid on LeeChess or Chess.com? I haven't played enough on Chess.com to, uh, to get a sense. In my experience with LeeChess is like they're very quick to ban people. Like usually within reporting someone, it takes maximum a couple hours. Okay, let's focus here. I could take the knight. Bishop b4 probably coming. Yeah, king b1 is probably the safer move. And then bishop b4, a3. We might have the same situation on the queen side. It looks like I'll be getting the bishop pair. So two bishops against two knights. Knight d5, I have bishop d2. I mean, generally the two bishops are for choice, but I do have some damage structure. Black is super solid here. Knights are very centralized. I would like to expand soon with c4. King here first. I might be threatening c4 knight moves and then this. trying to calculate here it's a fork here here is coming and Bach was maybe threatening knight c4 so expecting this move now which actually this move runs into this because it cuts off the battery so what does Bach do here I don't think Bach can save the material. Like the rook can't defend the knight. Knight f d7, d4, attacking the pinned piece. If g5, then just bishop g3. Yeah, if somehow the knight wasn't blocking the rook, then rook d4 would be possible. Also g5, maybe 
I could take. I think bishop g3 is simpler, though. Okay, let's play this. Restricting the knight. I'm taking advantage of the fact if takes, I take back and then attack this knight and threaten to take with discover check. Forgot about this though. It's a little bit careless. King b3. So if takes, I have c4. I'm ready to take and take, and simplify a bit. I mean, d5 is also a consideration. Also h5. I'm going for this though. Yeah, so this structure is nice in restricting the knight. My rook can't infiltrate right away, but the plan is to play this and then probably eventually rook d7. So black has knight and pawn for rook. We're getting some nice variety of endgames today. Like hopefully I can show how to convert this. I mean, it's nice having the two rooks against rook and knight when there's open files to access. Because sometimes it's just a matter of making the battery. Okay, that prepares knight d7. It does allow rook d8, though. Yeah, I'll make the battery on the d file. Maybe this first. Preventing knight e5. This would have been a fork. If knight b6, I'm looking at rook e5. King c6. Okay, knight wants to come to c5. Start with this. I'm just making it so knight c5 is in check, and then I can respond with rook d6. It is counterintuitive to put the rook or put the king on the same file as a rook. Um, now a knight d5, some idea. Let's play this. Always have to watch out for forks. Knight d5 king here. Like almost some mating net.
a weird square for the rook, but I want to play h5. Maybe Black was expecting Rook takes g7 there. Okay, got the job done. Uh, it takes work. Not going to be easy, but making some progress. Oh, Charm is heading to bed. Yeah, uh, good luck with your travels. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the challenge. I'll let you know. I don't think it's likely, though, but I'm trying. I have 34 minutes left. Welcome back to Jay. Playing Phoenix O Rab. I still have to think about my favorite chess game ever. But it's a very difficult question to answer. Okay, let's berserk. Opponent's playing my London repertoire. Okay. Not as familiar with this line. I think this is already looking nice for black. It's a slightly unusual fork that I guess a lot of London players might not be used to. Have to watch out for queen h5. Yeah, maybe I was too quick to take there. There's e5. I'm regretting this decision. F5, like maybe castling? Castling looks so wrong, but maybe in queen h5, f5. Yeah, maybe it's a way to go. Rook g1. I mean, with queen h5 coming, the point is to play f5. Like f5, queen f6, it should be defendable. Yeah, I would have loved to queen's eye castle, but I just didn't have time. Queen h5 would come with check. There were lines where if I got the queen to f7 or some bishop g6 idea. So at least here, yeah, like queen f6. Maybe the bishop can help out. Knight g5. So I'm calculating bishop d7, knight g5, h6. I mean, sometimes the best strategy is to just not get mated and then be happy. Sometimes easier said than done. I was considering bond clouding, like king d7. Um, it was kind of a judgment call. I thought here I, I have enough resources to weather the storm. 
Okay, so now if the knight goes back, then I'm almost trapping the queen. There is knight g6 or rook g6. Knight g6, can I play knight e7? I mean, white could take with check. I could take with bishop. I'm not trapping the queen, unfortunately, because it has h3. But then maybe g5, or maybe just bishop back. Oh, bishop b5, I should also, should also have on my radar. Hmm. I want to prevent knight e5. I mean, rook e1's probably coming. And there is a crazy line, rook e6 and then knight g5, where white can try and sack everything for mate. Not quite happening, though. Ooh, pawn takes. I think with pawn takes, now I'm happy, because uh, the file's closed. I do have not the best bishop, but... Make the most of it. G4 is coming very soon. Could leave the tension to... Now let's play this. Um, it's an H3 idea. Yeah, this looks ridiculous, but I want to get my rook to g8. King King is maybe even just safer on e7. Oh, but I lose a pawn. Okay. Oh, it's a fight. Probably not better here anymore. Interesting. I was expecting the king to move. So now I'll win the h pawn. Black or white has to play this move. Getting an active rook. And another endgame. And tis the season of endgames, and also tis the season of merch. Someone purchased oh no, my queen. Oh yes. Hoodie for forty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Thank you, someone. I have forty-four seconds. Okay, let's focus. I'm gonna win this pawn. That is enough time. Hmm. The rook back in play.
so important to have b6 here. This position is mutual zigzag. Actually, I'd still be winning if b4... I'd still be winning if it was my move. But b6 makes life easy. There, there. That's the most efficient way to win this. Just had to make sure white's not queening first. Okay. Okay. That was a, kind of a close one. Um, just given my time situation. But converted the end game. Yeah, to win the tournament, I need to play four more games, which means my games have to average, what, four minutes? Like less than five minutes per game. And then I also need this player to stop winning. Oops. Berserking a decently high rated opponent. Okay. At least we have a fun opening. Thank you, Lorgan. Yeah, the nice thing about castling is it prevents e5, which is usually the point of the early knight e7. So after takes, 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 there's a pin. I mean, this is a more, maybe more trendy way of playing this position. Black delaying, casting kingside. Some idea to play e5. Okay, very often the knight can go back to C1. Yeah, here. And there's bishop h6. Play bishop e3. Hmm. Not the happiest developing square for the knight. But I want to play knight c1 and then take with a rook. Didn't want to take with this rook. And maybe the knight can come here or here. Yeah, allowing takes. Maybe it's okay. Just a lot of trades. Hopefully there's no funny business, like knight b2 doesn't work. Okay, knight b3 probably coming, f4 in the air. I think I want to start with knight b3, uh, no, I want to start by taking. Probably do want to start with taking. So queen takes, I play this. And then knight here, does that work? I have queen b3. Oh, there's also queen e4 there. So I have this move. Queen b5 is coming. That's a question. Do I want to play e5 first? I probably do. Take, take, castle. I could trade queens. Actually, yeah. Um, queen b5, e5, take. We trade queens. 
and I hit c6. There's this move, which I didn't calculate. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That was super scary. Knight c3 is like begging to be played. Thankfully, my knight defends b2. Um, but I'm probably in trouble here. At this move. I'm desperate to just try and simplify and reach some playable endgame. Like there's a line takes and then takes and then takes and then takes. And maybe that's playable. Also, where's the queen going? If we queen trade, I'm happy. Queen goes here, I hit the queen. Oh, but then the queen hits me. But then I neutralize. So rook b8 is coming now. And just rook e1. Rooks on half open files have half smiles. So rook b8, have e8 first, e4 is some idea. I'm preparing knight b4 perhaps to watch out for bishop f8. E4 is still on tap too. I do have knight c1 is maybe a nice idea. Like looking to reroute to b3. I'm also unleashing the rook. If I provoke d4, then the bishop is a bit more stuck. Yeah, usually pawns in the center like this are powerful, but here are the pawns are targets. Okay, so I think I have to play this. Queen f6, c3. Yeah, it gets messy. Take. I could consider knight d4 or queen a3. And c3 looks like the most natural, though. There's a lot of lines where a7 hangs in the end. Uh, take first, probably not.
you know, losing f3, winning d5 or a7. If queen f5, I have to play king a1. The opponent's getting a little bit lower in time. Still down about two minutes. Okay, so let's take. So now if takes, I take here with check first. There's rook a8. Calculating rook a, queen d7. To watch out for queen c2. This is a bad pre-move. I, I still have this idea. And black probably won't do that. Keep in mind this move too. Too much pressure there. How does Black defend? I mean, Knight D four maybe at the right moment. Wow. Queen d7. Queen e4, I play this. H2 has been hanging for a bit. I'm not actually threatening to take. Yeah, let's start pushing the A pawn.
Ay, ay, ay. Uh, a little bit too slow there. Good game. Uh, what to do? I was worse out of the the opening actually, but then kind of salvaged things. Was I never better? Towards the end, maybe there were some chances. The only time I was like significantly better was when this move was played. Wow. I did think I had, like momentum was on my side after knight c5, but well, black played a good game. And this position was crazy. Because I was so close to getting the pawn to a8, and I was controlling this uh, g1 square. Like, if queen here, I think I just push. But black found a good move, yeah. And this is losing for white. Why did rookie two never work? Rookie two, but at what point? Not sure when rookie two would be a, a viable move. Oh, maybe here? Um, in this position, I was threatening f7. And then here I was threatening to take with d5 or take on d5 with check. Yeah, and then I couldn't take on d5, even though I want to. Uh, there's back rank issues. I take with rook, I get mated. It takes with queen, then take, take, and there's still issues. So, what to do? Back to tournament. Might get in one more game. Probably won't count for the tournament, though. The berserking streak comes to an end. Yeah, no berserking this game. <laughs> I'll, I'll enjoy having my uh, my full 10 minutes. Yeah, I didn't play rook b1 because of bishop takes c3 ideas. Hey, I won. Okay. Just need a few more games like that to catch up to first. <laughs> if the rest of my opponents forfeit. GG. Yeah, the cleanest game I've played all day. Squeaky clean. Will Lee Chess give an accuracy for that game? Let's see. Can I even run that game with the engine? Uh, let's do it later. Okay. Final game, most likely. Debating what to play. I want to play a four night scotch. Let's play a, a Spanish. I haven't played a Spanish in a while. Hi, Eric. Did I miss anything? Uh, you've missed a few games, but you're joining for what's going to be probably the final game of the tournament. So this is my pet line in the Spanish. D4 is not the most common move. Uh, C3 would enter the marshal. And then there's a lot of anti marshals too. With this line, I do allow bishop to g4. There's other lines in the Spanish where white has h3 included, and it's a bit different. This does resemble an Italian of some sort. And Spanish and Italian are pretty related, at least when it comes to chess. Rook e8. I'm actually curious, like, do I have tactics? Take and then queen b3 and knight g5. 
spend a moment here. Probably not. I'll spend a few moments. Bishop f7, king f7, queen b3. d5, might take. So king f8, knight g5, d5. Yeah, I don't think there's enough. I can't remember having studied rook e8, though, so it's kind of bugging me. Like, there's also knight g5, like, if I want to draw. What do I take first? And then take on f7. Because then there's no d5. Bishop b6 doesn't work. I mean... If I don't see anything wrong with it, then I'll go for it. But one more time. Takes, 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 check. King f8, knight g5. That looks good. Knight d5, I take, take. Take on c6. If king g6, I'm going to have knight h4, check. So take, 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 take. Check here, check here. Uh, queen d1, check. Uh, yeah, let's just assume that's good. Yeah, let's go for this. It's a very weird tactical idea, but I'm trying to exploit the fact that rook e8 leaves f7 less defended. It just seems so random to sack on f7 when... Most of my pieces are not so developed. I hope I'm not missing anything. Because originally I was calculating these lines with the pawn still here. And in those lines, there'd be this d5 move to block. So now I guess I have to take a look, a closer look at this line. So I kind of stopped after knight h4, king h5. But I guess it's still a question how to win there. And actually, the queen d1 allows a queen trade, which I forgot about. So maybe there's like queen f7. Now we do see king to g6. So knight h4, king h5. I start with queen f7. I mean, am I winning after king takes h4? g3, king h3. Queen takes g7. It's not super clear. I think I'm still going for this. I mean, what else to do? I think I have an idea. This is not your typical Spanish or Roy Lopez. Like usually it's a, a strategic battle in the middle game, but now it's just a, a king hunt. Ripping the king from its shelter. I might be employing this, this strategy, sacrifice everything. It might be checkmate. So queen f7, king takes, my calculation is knight d2. <clears throat> And then g6. Now let's go for this. It's going to be so sad, like, especially this line, g3, king, h3. And black plays g6 first. Now this does allow knight f5. I don't know if it does so much. To 
watch my time too. I kind of like the idea of 9 of 5. There's one issue with it though. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, the problem is I'm just not developed enough. I go for 9 of 5. I'm so curious to analyze this afterwards. Uh, it's possible that box is like, completely okay here. So I guess I'm not losing two pieces. I'm just losing or trading off the knight for the bishop. a logical move. So g4, there's f3, there's h3. I think I'll take. The nice thing about this move is whatever black takes back with, I play this. Threatening mate and threatening the knight. Problem is, it's not winning. Mm. I mean, what else to do, though? G4. Wait, G4, King digs G4. Queen e6. That doesn't work. Okay, let's play this. Wait, isn't wait. So here I take, take, take. I just stopped calculating after queen d7, but maybe there's something? Because the king has to move up. G3. King H3. I might have to go for this, even though I don't see the win. Okay, I have one idea. Okay, so I'm, I've sacrificed a rook now. Yeah, when I saw this line initially, I thought queen d7, I would have to trade queens, but sacking the rook keeps the queens on the board. And the king can't go back because this bishop is playing a role. We should note that black is threatening checkmate. So I have to keep initiative. There's two legal or two viable moves. Problem is king h4, g3, king h3. So my idea is to play this. And bishop g5, no. Not thrilled with this still. Hmm. 
You should have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that's a good move. Have to take. I think it's just losing. Hey, thank you for the raid. If you're just joining, I have 31 seconds. We have a crazy position, so I have to stay focused here. Like, I think I'm losing somehow, but not entirely sure how. Is this, I have this. Okay, somehow queens are off the board. Now we're just in another end game. How did that happen? I'm up a pawn too, okay? Thank you, darn it. Still very low on time. I hung this pawn. Although it's, this is a counterattack. Yeah, so if black takes here, I win both pawns. Rook b8 would have been really annoying there, but opponent missed it. Oh, yo, yo, yo. What's happening? I hung a rook, but I probably missed it. Ay, ay, ay. Expecting rook f6. Oh, what a game. Black's a little bit slow here, though. Okay. Uh, call an ambulance for me. Yeah. 
Let's analyze. It was a fun game. There were a lot of crazy lines that didn't quite happen on the board. Okay, I'm happy to answer questions. I think Black had a much cleaner way to win at some point, too. So, yeah, so here, I was actually expecting queen d5. And look at how many blunders there were. <laughs> oh dear, but that, that was a bit later, okay. So was this, was this line at all playable? Any games in Masters play after rookie eight? Rookie eight's like almost never played. Hey, okay. So the engine likes bishop takes f7. And queen b3. So in this position, I was a little bit too too quick to play knight h4. And actually, rook d1 makes a ton of sense to get the d file. But both moves are playable. But rook d1. I think if I considered this, I would have maybe leaned more towards it and then saved knight h4 for the next move. So what's the difference here? Rook d1, can black take? Oh, black has bishop e6. Wow. Wait, so rook d1 here, bishop e6. It's different because my knight's not hanging. Okay. Then all of a sudden here, like black is just better. Yeah, I had to move back. I was trying to justify knight h4. And then... Okay, so rook takes e5. I was excited when I found this move, but unfortunately... Um, yeah, there's this rook takes g2 idea. which I think is the best practical shot. Queen d5 also playable. I was actually scared of queen h3. Queen h3 looked like the way more like natural check and then rook g8. But then somehow here, I guess queen e5. Oh, queen f3 too. So black could have won with queen c6, f3, and then only winning move bishop c5. That's hard to find. And I'm not in time to develop my bishop to defend with a rook. And then later, yeah, the end game probably could have played better. Like here, I had 11 seconds left, and maybe should have started with knight d4. And then here I blundered the rook, and then I think I pre-moved c7 expecting black to take it. Black didn't take it, and all of this slowed me down a little bit. Uh, and then here I want to fork, but I can't. I think I played rook g2 expecting rook f6, but yeah, rook g6 was a more precise move perhaps. Okay. Very cool game, though. That was a fun line. So, hope people enjoyed the chess. And a nice mix of games today. Um, I think I'll be wrapping things up. Although, I do want to share. I got a package in the mail. I ordered a new, a new device on Amazon. That I might incorporate into the next stream somehow. We're gonna have to like play around with it. But I got uh, what's called a walking pad. It's like a treadmill, but it's like a miniature thing that it's a pad that allows you to like walk indoors. 
And I thought it might be cool to use, because this setup is actually a standing desk. I don't usually use a standing feature too often, but um, maybe at some point, if I can get it working properly, I'll do a stream where I'm walking and then walk a few miles while playing chess. It's called a walking pad. I forget the brand, C2 maybe? It can only go up to like three and a half miles per hour. So it's not like I'll be sprinting or anything. And maybe for like the Lee Chess, did the winter marathon already happen? Wait, Lee Chess, usually it's December though, right? Lee Chess winter marathon. Oh, it's in three weeks. It'd be cool to play the marathon while walking a marathon. Although that might be unhealthy for my legs. Maybe it will be healthy for my legs. Let's join. If I average three miles per hour, how long does it take to walk a marathon? 26 miles, eight, Eight and a half to nine hours. Did I do the math wrong? Eight hours, 23 minutes. Or 14 hours. <laughs> some people practicing some SAT questions. It'll be healthy for the first five miles. Yeah, maybe I have to physically prepare. Anyway, uh, thanks to everyone who I did not acknowledge. Uh, free to try, Super Smash My Bros, Dynemont, Daniel RS, Darnese with the bits from earlier, Clambus. Oh, and thanks to uh, AOL, AOL Iron Maiden, who sent the raid earlier too. And Jonathan. So I will be back at some point. Stay tuned for more YouTube content. And have a good night. Goodbye.